Please go to elithecomputerguy.com and failednormal.com to see the videos that are too dangerous for YouTube. Welcome back. In this particular video, I dare say we're going to do a project that is actually valuable for a lot of the geeks out there. So all the geeks out there, let's see a raise of hands. How many of you folks have been told one of the ways to improve your health, one of the ways to improve your mood is to get houseplants? And you've gone out there and you diligently bought house plants, and then you didn't couldn't figure out when to water them and when not to water them, and so the house plants died, and you're sitting there just looking at this kind of disgusted lump of stuff that fungus is growing over, wondering why in the hell this is supposed to make you feel better. Any hands, any hands, any folks out there that have done that? Well, one of the big problems is you go out there, you get house plants, and then the question is, is when do you water them? To make sure that you water them when the, when the soil is dry, but to make sure you don't overwater them. I mean, how many times have you had that problem? You sit there and go, oh, I haven't watered the plant in a week. And so then you water the plant, and then the next day you're looking at the plant going, crap. Did I water the plant yesterday? I'm not sure, so I'll dump a little bit more water in there. And then the, the plant went from drying out, and now it's drowning. It's, it's all kinds of bad. You know it. If you haven't done it, you at least have a friend who has. So what we're going to be doing today with this particular project is we're going to be using one of these analog uh, soil moisture sensors, and we're going to be using LEDs. So when the moisture is below, when the moisture, the, the analog reading that we're getting is low. So basically, remember, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out the resistance here. So the less resistance, the lower the number, the more uh, moisture there is in the soil. So the lower the number, the more, more moisture. So what we're gonna do is if we're getting a reading below 300, then we are going to light up the green LED because that says, okay, we're getting a lot of conductivity through here. So that means there's there's moisture here. So we're going to say that the, the soil is moist, but if the number is above 300, we're going to turn on the red LED uh, to say, hey, we probably need to water the plant. So this is going to give you a visual cue, a visual notification on when to or not to to water your plant. Now to be clear here, now to be clear here for any of the geeks, I'm not saying that the level 300 is the level that's appropriate for your particular plant. We are going to read out uh, to the serial monitor in this project to see what our sensors are reading. So if you're going to do this in the real world, what I would say is figure out what moisture level your plant should be shove the little moisture sensor in there, get your reading, and then create the variable based off of that reading. The other thing that we're going to do in this particular project is we're going to use not just one, but two moisture sensors. Remember, with moisture sensors, we're able to take an analog reading, if you're using even an Arduino Uno board, you're able to have at least five analog inputs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two of these connected to the Arduino Uno, just to show you that you can use one board in order to create a system for multiple pots. So again, if you go out there and you buy a couple of herbs and a couple of other things, you have five pots, you can actually put five moisture sensors in, one moisture sensor per pot, and then have a notification system so you know, oh, my, my garlic or whatever, that needs water, but my tomato plant is okay. So with that, let's go over to the workbench. I'll show you the components and how to build this thing. Uh, then we'll do the code, and then I'll bring it all together to show you how it works. Now here is the project as it's been built. Now it may look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. If you divide this off into its own separate components, you realize that this is a relatively simple project. So again, we're gonna be using two moisture sensors, so one, two. So we have two sets of spikes, and then we have two controller boards for these moisture sensors. So here we have the, the positive uh, and the ground that run to the controller board, the positive and the ground that run to this controller board. Then from the controller boards, we have positive. So we're gonna be running these off of five volts. So both of these are being run off of five volts. So we have positive and we have ground. We are then going to be running these to the breadboard. The reason being is that we're going to need a lot of ground connections and multiple five volt connections. So we're going to be running the power and the ground off of the, the, the power and the ground power rails off of this breadboard. So the power 
for both of these power and ground go to the power and ground rails on the breadboard and then of course the sensor wires uh, the sensor analog sensor wire for this one and the analog sensor wire for this one this goes to a0 and a1 on the uno board and so that's what we're dealing with here with these sensors then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running the ground wire and we're going to be running the five volt wire to power the power rails on the breadboard so that comes here and then from there we're dealing with the leds so since we have two we have two moisture sensors. We need two sets of LEDs. So this is the green and red for sensor one. And this is the green and red for sensor two. Again, the, the negative, the negative, we simply have a little jumper wire here that goes to the negative on the power rail. And then in order to power the LEDs, we then have specific wires, jumper wires running to the digital pins on the LED. So basically, or on the Arduino. So when the Arduino powers, uh, it powers up um, digital pin at number nine. That will correspond with powering up the red LED for sensor two. So that's all we're dealing with this. Again, if you've been dealing with these projects at this point, essentially all we're doing is we're setting up a little visual alert board using LEDs. We use a 220 ohm resistors here. We use the standard LEDs, green or red or whatever colors you want. You do the negative over to the power rail and then you actually run the power to turn on the LEDs to the digital pins on the Arduino Uno. So that's what we got. Then of course over here to, to simulate, to simulate two different um, pots, we have one INE cup full of dirt and one Eli the computer guy cup full of dirt. And of course, to show you that these are dynamic sensors, we have a turkey baster again, and we have water. One of the very few times, one of the absolutely very few times you should have water anywhere near your Arduino project, what we're going to do is we're going to read the sensor. One of the uh, one of these soil samples, the value is up near about 400. Uh, so what that'll show is a red light will turn on and it'll show that the, the, the soil is dry. So I'll use a turkey baster to add some water. Then we'll see the, the, the value go down and then the light will turn green to say that the, the soil is wet enough. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code to see how this uh, comes together in the code. So here's the code for this particular project. And again, it's relatively simple. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to define the analog pins for the soil sensors. So we'll simply have soil sensor one that will go to analog pin zero, A zero, soil sensor two to analog pin A one. Uh, then we're going to have to define the, the LED lights to be able to turn them on. So define green LED one, that will go to digital pin six, red LED one will go to digital pin seven, green LED two will go to digital pin eight, red LED two will go to digital pin nine. Now again, when you're doing things like assigning pins, you will have your own way to do it. I like to group things together. So I think, I think of these as modules. So the green LED one and red LED one, they go together. So I want them to six and seven green LED two and red LED two. I think of them as going together. So I put them to eight, eight and nine. You, of course, the numbers here don't really matter. You could, you could make these whatever digital pens you want. Then we're going to go down here. We're going to create a variable for good moisture. So what, what is a moisture level that I consider good? So I'm going to consider anything below 300 to be good. Now, again, and we're dealing with these moisture sensors, the higher the number, the more resistance there is. So I think it's a, it goes up to 1,023. So 1,023 is when you're literally just holding uh, the, the moisture sensor in your hand and there's no conductivity at all. Uh, zero is if you short the moisture sensor and you have a wire that simply goes from one side to the other. Uh, so when we stick this into the, into the ground or into the soil, basically the higher the number, the drier the soil is. Uh, so I have just simply, again, this is arbitrary. Let me be clear to all the geeks out there. This is freaking arbitrary. If you code this into your plant and your plant dies, it's not my fault. I just simply set a value of 300 because that works for this particular project. Again, to say again, figure out what number works for your plant. Don't just copy and paste. Anyways, then we're going to go down, we're going to set up the environment, and with this, all we're simply doing is the pin mode function. We're setting green LED, red LED, green LED 2, red LED 2. We're setting all of those to output, basically just to be able to turn on the LEDs. 
And then for troubleshooting purposes and the rest, uh, we are starting serial monitor. So serial up again at 9600. Then we come down to the fun code. Now, the first part of this code is where we're going to be dealing with the serial monitor. Again, this is just for troubleshooting purposes or when you're trying to go in there and do things like tweak, tweak the value for the good moisture. You can rip all this out. To, to be clear, this particular project, you could simply plug this in to a battery pack or plug this into a wall outlet and it doesn't need a serial monitor at all so do remember that I'm just putting the serial monitor in there just so we can actually see what's going on again for troubleshooting purposes so we're gonna create int uh, we're gonna create a variable called sensor value 1 and we're going to set that to the value of out analog read sen uh, soil sensor 1 so we're just simply pulling what is the value what is what are we reading out of soil sensor 1 then we're gonna create a variable uh, sensor value 2 equals analog read of soil sensor 2 so pretty simple we just need a variable Variable to be able to work with. Then what we're going to do here for the serial monitor is serial.print sensor1 equals, so we'll print out sensor1 equals, and then the value of sensor1. Then we'll say serial print uh, sensor2 equals and the value of sensor value2. So this simply prints out so we know what we're looking at. Then we get down here and this is the code that is required for the LEDs. So if sensor value1 is less than good moisture, so that means it's good. Again, lower the value is good. Then digital right, green LED one high. So it's gonna turn the, the green LED on for LED one. Digital right, red LED one low, right? So it's gonna turn, uh, turn off the red LED. Else, digital right, green LED one low, red LED one high. So basically if, it's, if, if sensor value one is greater than good moisture, then it's going to turn the green LED one off and it's going to turn the red LED on, all right. Then we're going to come down here again, sensor value two. It's basically the same thing. We just uh, plug in a two instead of a one. Uh, so if sensor value two is less than good moisture, then green LED two is going to be turned on high. Red LED two is going to be turned off. Else again, green LED two is going to be turned off. Red LED two is going to be turned on. And then we're going to simply delay for a second. Loop, 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 loop. And so with that, let me uh, let me plug in the project, upload the code, and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so I've connected up the Arduino Uno uh, to the USB cable. So this USB cable connects to my computer, so it powers uh, the Arduino Uno, and it'll allow us to read from the serial monitor. As you can see, we have our soil moisture sensors here, and I've just left them out of the soil for a second, just so you can see what that high reading is. Basically, the, the reading if there's no conductivity at all. So we're going to go do is we're going to go to Tools. We are going to go to Serial Monitor. And we're going to see what the output is. Okay, so what we can see here is serial one equals 1,023, serial two, or sensor two equals 1,023. So when there's no conductivity at all, you get 1,023. So now what we're going to do is we are going to shove this into this dirt. And we're going to start to see that, that sensor value change. So sensor one is now at 453, 473, so on and so forth. And so... Then we're going to plug in this over here into the, uh, the the wet soil, and we can see that that's down to like 236, 240, or whatever. One thing that I do have to say when you're dealing with these moisture sensors, in all seriousness, leave them for like five minutes in order to, for them to figure out what they're reading. Um, because when you shove them into the soil, I'm not sure what's going on at the, the chemistry level or whatever else, but it really does take a little bit of time before they figure out what they're looking at. So what we can see now is that the dry soil, uh, sensor one is reading somewhere around 464, 465, and sensor two is reading around 258. So dry soil, that's high obviously, sensor two is low, and so what we can see is that for, for sensor, for moisture sensor one, we're getting the red LED. So we're being told that this pot is dry, it needs water. On the other hand, this pot over here, since it's below 300, it's reading that 240 or so, we get the green light to be told we don't need to water this particular pot. And that's really all there is to this project. So then what we're gonna do here, again, the one time, the one time, one time, you're allowed to play with water around your Arduino, and again, again, <laughs> do this at your own risk. <laughs> to be clear, water and electricity don't mix. 
Do this at your own risk. But anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the turkey baster here, got a turkey baster, got some water, and then we're just gonna dump this in and see where the level comes down. So now, now we go, there we go. So we're down to 284 or whatever, and we can see that that now says green. Oh, no, nope, nope. But again, it takes a second for it to figure out its mind. So we gotta give it a little bit more water. So then we'll give it a little bit more water here. We drive it down again and the LED turns green. So now we have two pots. We have two pots that are fully watered and now our plants, our plants will be able to grow. Now, one of the things to, to think about is what you could also do since we're dealing with these analog numbers here, you could figure out, oops, I went back up to red again. I gotta say it takes a second. Uh, one of the things you could do is you could figure out how much how wet is bad. So we know dry is bad. If it's too dry, huh, this keeps doing that. If it's too dry, we know that's bad. But there's a problem if it's also too wet. So one of the things that you could do is you could have different colors, right? So if it's above 300, it's red. If it's, you know, between 200 to, uh, to 300, it's yellow or something. And then if it's below 200, which means there's too much water, uh, then that might be a problem. Maybe you do like yellow or something like that. So this is basically how it works. I don't know why this keeps, again, these moisture sensors are a pain. Just to be clear, if you're dealing with these moisture sensors, they're not exactly... Here, let me just dump a lot of water in here. There we go. We're gonna do this the geek way. We're gonna do this the geek way. There we go. So there you are, there's the project. So for all you geeks out there that you know want a better life, a healthier life, having, uh, having indoor plants, maybe now, maybe now when you see that red LED, you'll be like, oh, I should probably water that thing. Maybe that's a good idea. Do remember too, do remember, uh, powering an LED is the same as powering like a piezo buzzer. So you can actually power a buzzer. So if you think, oh, I don't, I don't know if I'll remember to look at an LED light. Maybe if you have a buzzer and the buzzer is buzzing, maybe that will get you to notice. Or in a, in a future project, one of the things we're gonna do in the future is we're actually going to connect a setup like this to power a water pump. And then, and then not only you, can you be notified that there's a problem, but you can have the Arduino actually solve the problem for you, which is really, that's what we're looking for in the modern world. The modern world is no longer simply about notifications. Notifications, that's all 2005. When we're looking at the future, what we want is to be, we want to be notified that there was a problem and what our system did to solve the problem. And that's what we want in the modern world. And so that's what we're going to get to. One of the things that I will say with these analog sensors, with these little things, is they are, um, they are quirky. These are a bit quirky. <laughs> Uh, I literally one of the uh, one of the things that I did before I did this uh, particular video is I actually shoved both sensors into the exact same pot and they really were reading different readings. Uh, so if you're going to be doing this at home, one of the big things that I would say is when you're setting those variables, you may actually want to create different variables for the good moisture, right? Good moisture for pot one and good moisture for pot two and good moisture for pot three, and then see what the sensor is reading and then create the value for those variables based off of the individual pots and the individual sensors. Um, that is just one of those things that I will warn you with these particular sensors is you can put two what are, of what are supposed to be identical, supposed to be identical sensors into the exact same pot, not that far away from each other, um, and you will get a pretty large variance. I was getting up to a hundred uh, variance uh, with what the uh, the sensors were seeing. So just keep this in mind if you actually plan to deploy this into your own into your own little uh, urban jungle. So just one of those things to be thinking about. So with that, that's really all there is to this project. As always, I enjoyed doing this video and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.